I feel like I look very conflicted now. I have like Marvel on one shoulder and DC on the other. Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. Today, I thought I would talk to you about some of the 2019 releases that I am particularly excited about. Typically, this is something I do at the beginning of the year. I love going through publisher catalogs and just seeing um, other people's lists for the year and kind of getting a sense of what books I actually want to purchase, seeing as I don't necessarily like bulk buy books the way I used to. However, this year, I've just been super off of my bookish Game. and I actually did a little walk around to Barnes & Noble last week and realized that I am super out of touch with uh, new releases. So I went back, did a little digging, found some books that I think sound particularly interesting, and I thought I would go ahead and share, with, share those with you guys today. So close to getting that sentence perfectly. A lot of these books have already been released as, like I mentioned, I'm still catching up on 2019 bookish news, but some of them um, will not have come out yet. And I probably, maybe, maybe I will do this again once we get the catalogs for like the second half of the year. So if you guys are interested in seeing that, let me know in a comment down below. I have Goodreads up on my iPad here and I have a few notes written down, but I think the books I wanna start with are some Star Wars books. So first of all, I am really excited for the book Master and Apprentice by Claudia Gray. Now this came out in April and it's published by Delray Books and I started flipping through it and reading a little bit when I was in Barnes & Noble and let me just tell you it took a lot of self-control not to pick it up right on the spot. Now this is a Star Wars book set pre-Phantom Menace so Obi-Wan is still a Padawan and Qui-Gon is still his master. For those of you who don't know, for those of you who aren't longtime viewers of the channel, I I'm a huge fan of young Obi-Wan. That's kind of like my favorite era of Star Wars, honestly, like pre-Phantom Menace stuff, particularly focusing on young Obi-Wan Kenobi. I'm a 90s kid and in the early 2000s when um, I was really getting into reading the Jude Watson uh, Jedi Quest and Jedi Apprentice series were just coming out and I absolutely loved all those. That's like, I know it's not canon anymore, but that's my favorite version of Obi-Wan. So I'm hoping that this uh, Master and Apprentice book by Claudia Gray gives me similar vibes there. And regardless, young Obi-Wan is is always my fave. Then the other Star Wars book I am super excited about is Queen's Shadow by E.K. Johnson. Now this was published by Disney Lucasfilm Press. It came out in March and again it's set in that like pre everything exciting happening uh era of Star Wars. This is set post Phantom Menace um, and it follows Padme Amidala's transition from Queen to Senator and again love this era. I was really obsessed with Padme when I was younger um, and I think this is just going to be fantastic. So another one I can't wait to get my hands on. Sticking with a kind of fantastical theme, another book that I'm really excited about is The Binding by Bridget Collins. Now this is another April release um, and it's published by William Morrow and this kind of gives me grown-up Inkheart vibes and I'm gonna read you part of the description so that you get what I'm saying. Imagine you could erase grief. Imagine you could remove pain. Imagine you could hide the darkest, most horrifying secret forever. A uh, young Emmett Farmer is working in the fields when a strange letter arrives summoning him away from his family. He is to begin an apprenticeship as a bookbinder, a vocation that arouses fear, superstition, and prejudice among their small community, but one neither he nor his parents can afford to refuse. For as long as he can recall, Emmett has been drawn to books, even though they are strictly forbidden. Bookbinding is a sacred calling, Sarah Diff informs her new apprentice, and he is a binder born. Now, obviously, I'm sure there's going to be some like high stakes drama going on as well, but it just, like I said, it gives me slight Inkheart vibes, and Inkheart is one of my favorite middle grade series of all time, so... I have high hopes for this one. Another fantasy book that I am very intrigued by is The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. Now this one was released in February, I believe. It's by Bloomsbury or published by Bloomsbury and it's like over 800 pages. I saw it and picked it up in Barnes Noble the other day and it was just, I mean, it's, it's, it's a quite a chunker. This is one I honestly don't know a whole lot about. I believe there are dragons and dragon writing involved. I know it's high fantasy, um, but it's just one of those books that I have been seeing everywhere. And although I initially wasn't necessarily super intrigued, because I keep seeing it everywhere and because I keep hearing such fantastic things about it, it's a book I really, really do want to pick up. Moving into more literary territory, one translated work I'm very fascinated by is The Pine Islands by Marianne Pushman. This is translated by Jen Kayeja. I, I think I butchered that. Um, it's published by Serpent's Tale and I believe this one was on the shortlist for the Man Booker International Prize. 
correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's how I found out about this one. From what I understand, it's about like some kind of a professor or lecturer or something who goes to Japan to kind of perform a sort of um, pilgrimage based on his uh, favorite Japanese poet or one particular Japanese poet. Uh, and basically they had me at Japan. Speaking of literary, uh, Kazuo Ishiguro has a new short story collection out. It's called Come Rain or Come Shine and it is published by Faber and Faber and was released back in January. Now this honestly, like looking at the blurb on, um, on Goodreads, it very much sounds like Murakami-esque stories. Uh, for example, when Ray turns up to visit his old friends Charlie and Emily, he's given a special task to be so much his useless self that he makes Charlie look good by comparison. But Ray has his own buried feelings to contend with. Decades earlier, he and Emily would listen to jazz when they were alone, and now as Sarah Vaughn sings through the speakers, he struggles to control everything the sound brings with it. If that doesn't give you Murakami vibes, I don't know what will. Um, also, Kazuo Ishiguro, he's one of my, like, auto by authors, so as soon as I have a chance to get my hands on this one, I probably will. Lastly, in the literary category, I have The Disappearing Earth by Julia Phillips. Now this one's going to be released in May uh, by Knopf, and it gives me major Reservoir 13 by John McGregor vibes. Reading the blurb here, it sounds like it's set in a small town in Russia, and two girls get abducted and basically the book looks at how that abduction and the consequent police investigation really affects the lives of the people in that town and if that doesn't remind you of Reservoir 13, I, I don't know what will. Although I didn't really talk about it much here on the channel, I did read Reservoir 13 last year and absolutely loved it. I thought it was a really fascinating way of looking at um, a death or a disappearance and if this gets me close to those feelings I will be very happy. As you can tell a lot of the books I'm picking this year are books that remind me of things I've already read. Lastly I do have two nonfiction books that I think just sound absolutely phenomenal. The first of which is Eat Joy Stories and Comfort Food from 31 Celebrated Writers um, which is a collection edited by Natalie Eve Garrett. Now this um, is not coming out until October so we've got a little while to wait here. It's pub published by Black Balloon and it's basically 31 different writers talking about how specific food evokes memory for them or how they um, connect certain aspects of their life with certain dishes and as someone who's just been really into food lately over the past like two years, gotten really into all kinds of cooking shows, all kinds of food documentaries, stuff like that, I think this will just be a really heartwarming and really touching collection that also might make me really hungry at the same time. And the last book on this list is of course a political memoir. I had to have at least one and that is The Shortest Way Home, One Mayor's Challenge and a Model for America's Future by Pete Buttigieg. Now, now, if you are not um, based here in the States, you might not know, but Pete, B Pete Buttigieg is one of the like 30 Democrats or something that are running for president in 2020. Um, and he's actually the candidate that I am currently most interested in. Now, obviously, I'm not making a final decision on any candidates right now. They haven't released nearly enough of their policy platforms, and I'd obviously like to see them debate each other and things like that. But Pete Buttigieg just seems to be the most fascinating to me. So far, he's the one who I align with most um, uh, ideologically, and I just think he could be a really exciting breath of fresh air for the country, but again, we will see. Anyways, Shortest Way Home is Pete Buttigieg's memoir of how he, as mayor of South Bend, Indiana, was able to revitalize the city and how he thinks that we can apply those same tactics, I think, on a more national scale. Plus, I do believe it'll probably provide a little bit more insight into his own personal life, which I am very fascinated by. So this one I think should be good. I'm going to, of course, listen to it on audiobook because I tend to digest all of my political memoirs best that way and I actually think he might he might um narrate it himself so even better. Editing Marissa here and I just realized that I left out one very exciting release and that is the new series of translated chapbooks from Strangers Press. Now Strangers Press was the publisher that released the Kashiki collection a couple of years ago now that that was a series of um Japanese literature translated into little chat books, so basically short stories or even I think there was even one short story collection. Sometime this month they are releasing their second collection which is um, I believe entitled Yo Yu. Uh, it's New Voices Korea, meaning that they are this time translating from Korean literature, again focusing on contemporary authors. The only two authors I can name off the top of my head that I know are part of the collection are uh, Hong Kong, obviously she's being translated by Deborah Smith, 
we wouldn't have it any other way. Um, and then also Han Yu Ju, who wrote The Impossible Fairy Tale, which I was not a fan of, but I'm always willing to give her a second shot. So definitely check out the links in the description box below. I will link to the uh, website where, where, actually, I don't know if you can pre-order it, but I will link to the website where you can at least get more information. Okay, so those were all of the 2019 releases that I am currently aware of that I find very exciting. So if you guys have read any of these, because like I mentioned, a lot of these have already come out, please, please let me know what you thought of them down in the comments below. Um, your feedback is always really helpful as to what I should purchase and what I should just check out from the library. However, I'm also very aware that I have missed like four months worth of releases and discussion here in the booktube community, so if there is something that you have read uh, this year that you think I would really like based on what I've shared here or what I've shared in any of my other videos, please feel free to recommend that for me down in the comments below because I often take your guys' advice and I find it um, quite helpful. And I've discovered that I really just don't remember how to end videos, so I'm gonna just leave it there. That is all I have for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're having a fantastic day and I will see you next time. Bye!